Hello again, uh, it's John here from JH Coaching and today I wanted to talk about um, using a watt bike for uh, uh, as part of your training and uh, basically it's a way of using power to um, enhance uh, your training if you don't have a power meter. It doesn't have to be a watt bike, it can be an indoor trainer of some sort or uh, another sort of gym bike that uh, that measures power but what bikes are the most common and they're becoming increasingly common in gyms and uh, I've used this technique quite successfully with uh, quite a few of my athletes um, in that they've been to the gym a couple of times a week or once a week done sessions on a walk bike uh, it's a great way to measure progression and uh, get some markers and learn about pacing and uh, um, it's just it's just really good and uh, particularly in the winter when it's freezing outside and dark and it's not necessarily that safe to be riding on busy streets uh, in particularly in bad weather so how do you do it um, well as usual I've written, written a blog article uh, about it and um, take the various steps I've got it goes through all the steps it's a lot more detail in the blog so if you want to look at that then you can just search for what bike on my website and um, the whole article is called uh, how to use what bike to incorporate power into your training and uh, works for any sort of endurance training so as with anything you need to establish what your goals are um, what do you want to achieve? Uh, I guess if you've not used uh, power before then uh, you, you may not know what you can gain from working with power. Um, so I suppose <coughs> a bit by way of a bit of explanation. Um, so power, uh, a lot of people use heart rate to train, uh, a lot of people don't use anything. Uh, it doesn't really matter which you choose but so with heart rate um, uh, heart rate doesn't vary quite so much as uh, as power does. It, it also gets affected by environmental conditions like if you're excessively hot then your heart rate will be higher or if you're very tired your heart rate won't go up as quickly as it would if you're fresh. So there's, a, there's variability with heart rate that uh, isn't necessarily dependent on the exercise that you're doing but also if you do short efforts on uh, uh, on the bike or running or whatever then um, you, your heart rate, rate won't respond so you don't know what you're doing until but like say 30 seconds afterwards so let's say you were doing a one minute effort and you wanted to do it at a certain intensity um, you couldn't use heart rate to do that sensibly because your heart rate would take um, you know take 10 or 15 seconds to to get up to the, the, the a stable level and in fact in a one minute effort it would never stabilize because it should be done at a uh, at a level of effort that you uh, that isn't sustainable whereas if you use uh, a power target then um, the, the, then basically you just get aim for the you know you work as hard as you as, as hard as you need to to hit that power and then you sustain that power for your one minute and then you knock it off and you recover um, for whatever you might need, you know, another minute and then a minute on, a minute off if you were doing that type of session. Or, um, or, a, bit, or a bit longer if you wanted to be working uh, on your more, you know, more pure power or explosivity um, for blasting up short hills or something like that. So that's basically it. So power, power is actually a really effective method to train. Um, so the, the, like with any new technology the best thing to do is just, just go and try it so find a gym or you might even be a member of a gym that's the ideal scenario because it doesn't then cost you any more money to to use the uh, use the bikes and, and start working with power so you go to your gym get your bike set up uh, in the same way that your uh, <coughs> that your normal bike is so they get, get the seat height the, the reach to the bars and uh, and the seat angle and, and everything set up to be as close as possible to your bike, you know, your, your setup that you've got right over the years. 
and then start using the watt bike ride easily for a bit, do some harder stuff. Um, see, uh, we obviously have to link it up to you. There's a phone, an app on your phone that you can record all this information. Connect it to your heart rate monitor if you've got one, because uh, even the heart you're not training to heart rate. Having heart rate information allows you to get a gauge of the overall intensity of your work and whether it's reasonable and also when you don't know your power zones you, you can actually make some assessment of them based on your heart rate and see how that compares. Like you say if you do 10 minutes at, at a tempo sort of effort um, using your perceived exertion or your heart rate then you'll get a power that, rep that is representative of, the, of that um, of that intensity and you can then use that to build the database of information and set your training sessions accordingly. Then you need, um, well you don't need to but it's very useful to get some sort of baseline as to, um, as to your power levels so that you can then use that information to set your training sessions. And the, the most common way of doing that is to make some uh, estimate of your functional threshold power, which everybody talks about, your FTP, and there are lots of tests and probably a, a test on the uh, uh, on the Watt bike um, that will give you an idea of your FTP. Um, so um, if you're using a Watt bike and the Watt bike app, then use the Watt bike test, get your FTP off that. If you want to do it yourself, then uh, there's, uh, um, you can do a 20 minute test um, you're to, and take 95% of that as to be your FTP. Uh, if you do the 20 minute test you're really supposed to do a 5 minute flat out test beforehand to uh, sort of deplete your system a bit and make sure you don't have to, you know, you, uh, you can overestimate FTP if you just do the 20 minute test. So uh, a, a good way is to do uh, do a warm up, do a one minute flat out effort, a five minute uh, get a, you know full recovery, then a five minute flat out effort, get another good full recovery like at least ten minutes between each, and then do your twenty minute time trial, uh, and um, use ninety five percent of your um, of your average power for the twenty minutes as, as your FTP, and your other values will give you good estimates of things like uh, well your one minute power is not a lot of use for just pure endurance sport but it does give you the profile if you want to do some more sophisticated type training but your five minute uh, power will give you a good estimate of your, uh, your power at VO2 max which is another marker that you can use and doing sessions to VO2 max uh, power is a really effective uh, uh, way to train uh, particularly if you're doing a lot of endurance work outside or uh, or even on rollers or whatever. So once you've got your uh, FTP um, you can uh, calculate your power, your training zones and um, you can see here that we've got, uh, I've, I've put these charts on the on my uh, website here but you can always, a, a really good way is in Training Peaks there's a you don't have to pay for it, you can just sign up to Training Peaks for free and then if you go into the settings area you can calculate training zones by putting in your FTP, your threshold heart rate or your maximum heart rate and just there are various ways of calculating um, zones for training. Uh, you just take a screenshot of that, print it out or something of it in your pocket if you can't remember it or put it into your training gadget or whatever and you've, th you've then got that and you you don't have to spend any money to sign up for Training Peaks, but I mean, it's a great tool. So, I mean, the premium version is a bit better, gives you more information. But um, you can also, if you want to use it as a diary, it's a fantastic training diary. Um, you can sync your Garmin or your Sunto or what your Polar or whatever um, training uh, computer you use, uh, or your you know, or phone, the what's uh, what bike app. And that will all go into one place. Uh, you can make notes and analyse your information. Um, so, what training zones? There are lots of different training zones. I tend to use the Coggan Classic uh, zones uh, 
for cyclists because uh, I've found them to work quite well. Um, they're not too complicated, they're only five heart rate zones and, and they're okay, there is six or seven um, power zones, but the main ones you were going to be working in are the, you know, the main five up to your VO2 max level. And then set yourself some goals. So, um, you know, your first goal is probably a good one would be to um, improve your test results. So you do your test result, um, there's that one minute, five minute, 20 minute test um, on your first, uh, your second time in the gym. Use your first time to get used to all the equipment. Do, it on, do this uh, test on your second or third visit. Um, then uh, you do some training over a month, six weeks, eight weeks, and then you test again. It's probably if if you if you're just starting, it's better to test every month so that you can see how things are changing because they change quite rapidly. Um, if you um, if you're doing some uh, if you're training outside, you're doing endurance work at the weekends, um, with the f or just riding with friends or whatever, then a great way to um, uh, to develop your fitness. If you if you're just if you're doing one session on the watt bike each week, is to concentrate on your VO VO2 max type sessions. So um, a simple way to look at a VO2 max session is if you do efforts of um, one minute to five minutes um, so like um, and have the same amount of time recovery as your effort so if you're doing I mean a good a good duration that you can sort of concentrate on um, and makes an effect is three minutes so you did three if you do three minutes on three minutes off and you need to do sort of 12 to 20 minutes of effort so you start with um, four, you know, four by three minutes with three minutes recoveries, and then uh, and that, that's basically it. So you do a good warm up, do a couple of one minute or thirty second efforts to get your legs moving. Do your four by three minutes. That's sort of twelve minutes of effort. Um, cool down uh, and then go home <coughs> and uh, feel happy because you've done a great session. Um, and you can build that up. So you four by three minutes, and then once you can cope with that. You can, five by three minutes and you do these at your five minute power that you've established during your test. <coughs> if you can go a bit harder then great. Um, uh, but that that's basically your target power should be your five minute power. Um, and um, and there you go. And if you um, if you're on the watt bike um, twice a week then do some longer efforts. So a, a great session is eight minute efforts um, with shorter recoveries. So they'll basically start to push your FTP power up. I mean the VO2 max efforts will also affect your your FTP uh, possibly more effectively than, than the eight minute efforts but you start to see different things work for different people. So your second session of the week would be a, 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 another warm up um, a couple of one minute efforts to get your legs moving and then say three by eight minutes with two minutes recovery and then uh, cool down and, uh, and and then off you off you go home and you've, you've boosted your fitness uh, substantially um, if you keep doing that every week um, you'll notice that you build fitness really quite quickly and um, so I suppose a, a proviso to that is um, that you really need to uh, have a bit of a rest. Um, so do sorry. Do um, you might do three weeks of two watt bikes a week, and then um, then have a week easy. So you might not might not go on the you might not go to the gym bike during your easy week, or you might do something you know something much easier. And if you don't have a strong background in in riding, just sitting for an hour in your zone two can make a huge difference. Um, so uh, if you find that you struggle a bit to produce the powers one day, then you can just do a more, you know, a less intense session. And um, or if you fancy a change, uh, it's quite. I mean, it's it's quite easy to start uh, riding 
uh, in your zone two uh, in the gym, but you probably find that after an hour of things, after maybe half an hour, things start to get a bit uncomfortable, and you have to quite concentrate quite hard um, for the last ten or fifteen minutes. But um, it's a really valuable session to do, so mix it up a bit. That's what also makes a big difference. And um, so the bottom line really is uh, do the uh, do the training here we are. Um, basically if you uh, if you don't do the training you won't get fitter if you do the training you almost set to get fitter and see the improvements uh, when you get out uh, into the events that you've got planned and, and, and your goal events so uh, hopefully you found this useful if you want to uh, see more of these videos please subscribe if you look at my website endurancebikeandrun.com if you uh, want to learn more from the blog articles and uh, good luck, get out training and uh, enjoy the Watt Bike. Bye.